Hi, we're here at the Cycle Touring Festival. I'm with my Brenda, and she's going to show us how to make a tarp from a Make a Tarp kit. Good morning, I'm Brenda, and I'm going to show you how to make up this tarp kit. Um, the tarp kit contains instructions, it contains two pieces of siliconized nylon, there are four Cordura pieces pre-cut into triangles for the, cut for the middle reinforced parts and the lengths of um, webbing that's been pre-cut to size. These are your webbing straps. Two will go in the middle on the seam line at either end and two will go in the middle of each long end. Let me just talk about the sewing machine. You do not need a fancy sewing machine. You can have a very old treadle machine, which will work. You, you don't need any electricity for those. Or you can have, this is a good 1990s model, still going strong. I also have a 1950s model, still going strong. And the, the advantage of the older machines is they're made of metal and they don't wobble about as much. You can ask around your friends. Often older people have them tucked away and don't use them. Or you can go to a charity shop where you can pick one up for as little as 25 pounds. The needle I would recommend here, I would recommend you use a Schmetz 90 stroke 14 needle that is a top stitch needle. The reason for that is it has a bigger eye here where the thread goes through and the reason you do that is because the thread moves backwards and forwards through the eye of the needle and if the eye of the needle isn't big enough it wears. Most machines of the older type have this sort of bobbin which you put in here and it clicks in. You may come across something called a walking foot or an even feed foot. These are very useful but I'm actually going to show the demonstration without one um, so that you, I'm go I can show you how to hold the fabric with, so you can use it without a walking foot but they are very good if you have one I'm going to thread the machine So the machine is threaded. I'm just going to pop a, an extension oh, yeah. table on. Oh, sorry, man. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the older machines um, don't have what they call a free arm, so you don't have to worry about that. So if you hold your threads behind the needle. And that's about a perfect length. If your stitch length needs to be long enough so that it goes through the fabric and it, it isn't so small that it bunches it up. This is a fairly thick thread that's why we've got the 9014 needle in and it, it makes a nice smooth stitch and it's a strong stitch. I'm going to start by making these I'm going to curve them into an S shape and I'm going to stitch them down so I'm going to stitch across here and this will make a loop so we're just going round in a square drop the needle pivot come back up drop the needle we make a, a square with a cross for strength and if you look we talked about the S shape before so you end up with a loop on that end and you end up with a loop on that end we do this on both ends of the four long strips so you get a loop 
on either end. One where the piece is underneath and one where the piece is on top. What we're going to do, we've got two pieces of fabric. I've taken the cell edges off um, because you don't want those on. Then we're only going to work on the, the first piece and we're going to fold it in half. So there we have the middle. This is where we're going to place our first piece of webbing and we're going to fold it into a V-shape to apply in the middle. Here's our V-shaped piece and that's going to be placed approximately um, one centimetre, half an inch, away from the edge of the cloth. And then what we're going to do is stitch. So we're about an inch away from the edge. I'm going to take that clip out, just altering that slightly. Just going to stitch that and then I'm going to move this so it's fairly close in there and then we're going to go back over put it into reverse if your machine doesn't have a reverse then turn it round but then you've got all this in here but most machines have a reverse and just do it three or four times and then clip your threads and you need love pull it out and clip your threads we're going to fold it we're going to fold it so it goes to the middle and then we're going to go approximately 2.5 centimeters an inch in and we're going to place our next v-shaped piece in here and if you do the same at the other end so you get your third one in position so there we have the first three hanging loops so we're now going to put the second piece of fabric on the top and for that we're just going to line the edges up and hopefully they will line up but don't worry if they don't you can always adjust it later so now we're going to start sewing the seam line approximately one inch from this edge of the fabric I'm going to say most sewing machines have lines so you can follow the line and one of the things to do is to hold your get your fabric hold it and then do that with your fingers and let the fabric come through your fingers it just helps to regulate it and you can feel you can feel where the um, the webbing is underneath so as you approach it you can feel it going over So now we've got the first seam done. We're just going to show you inside. There we have our first seam. And you can see where that's attached and we haven't quite we haven't quite caught that in, but it doesn't matter because it's attached there. If you fold the fabric uh, over on itself to, to the seam line and then fold it again and then you can use your fingernail or your thumbnail just to press a crease it just helps to hold it while so you don't have to use any pins because we do not want to use any pins because that will weaken the fabric so we don't use pins at all make sure that's flat make sure that's flat just take your time I'm just going to go back over
So we have to fold the fabric over about half an inch and fold it again and then we're going to stitch along here. Right, we've stitched all around the edges. So we did the short ends first and then we did the long edges. So now we're going to um, apply the patches to the middle. And this is a finished one. And it's got the puller on it. So now we're going to put a patch and a puller on the sides so that if you want to pitch the tarp in a different way you've got four different pullers. And you do not want to go off the edge and have thread going through the uh, just through a single thickness because it makes the uh, fabric more stressful in the wind and it could tear. I'm going to put a second row of stitching. just around and there we have the reinforcing patch now I'm going to apply one of these uh, pre-prepared strips that we made before and this is going in the center like that just line it up and then I'm going to stitch it along here up and, and reinforce cross another of the patches with its reinforcing strap on. I'm going to stitch this webbing on here and then I'm going to bring the other end up and I'm going to stitch that on there which will give us a loop for attaching guy line. And I'm just going to go into the middle here. I'm not going to undo the thread. I'm just going to pivot down and then I'm going to put the other bit on from here. And you have a decent sized loop for the puller at the end. You do that with all of those, putting the equally spacing them round and then you're finished. That's the last of the loops sewn on. So there's loops sewn on all around the top, giving you multi points for pegging down or for pegging out, whichever you want. So all we need to do now is go and put it up. <laughs> There's a few ways to put up your DIY, make it yourself top. Woo! To our next adventure. Hopefully not so wet. Amazing. <laughs>